Okay, so we're going to move on to 7.8, non-dissipative interactions. So recall that uh, dissipation of energy, if energy is dissipated, dissipated, then it I involves an irreversible, right? An irreversible interaction, meaning there is that that energy still exists, of course, but you can't use it any longer. It is you have kind of lost it. It's been dissipated. Okay, irreversible. So now, okay, so that, but now we're going to look at non-dissipative interactions, okay? So recall that for a closed system, meaning no energy uh, is added or lost to the system, w we have these four types of energy, okay? We've got our kinetic energy, uh, potential energy, source energy, and thermal energy. And we know that the change in the total energy of a closed system is zero. This means that your E equals K plus U plus E source plus E thermal is constant before and after the interaction. These are the same, this is really the same thing to say that this is constant, okay, before and after the interaction. It means that if you, the change in this is zero. Okay, but now we know that the source energy and the thermal energy are dissipative. Okay? We can't recover this energy back to our uh, for for our use. Okay? So now if if we can identify in our system, say now we're looking at a problem and we identify that the only energies that we are looking at are uh, kinetic and potential, then we also have this. Okay? We have this. The change in energy is now equal to the change in kinetic plus the change in potential, which is also equal to zero. So another way of writing this as well is delta K is the negative of delta U. Okay? So this is for a closed system, non-dissipative interaction. And this... K plus U is called your mechanical energy. And it is constant. It is constant. This is very, very important. Um, right? If you've got, say, if you're looking at uh, gravitational potential energy, for example, and you drop this box or whatever, this object down, it has a certain amount of potential energy, which then gets converted into kinetic energy. Okay? But the point is, if you add, if you, at this point, if you add up K and U, you'll get a certain value. At this point, if you add up the, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, you'll get the same value. At this point, if you add up the K and the U, you're going to get the same energy because it is constant. It is constant, okay? All right. So now... Um, this is the final thing for this video. Um, I know it's pretty small here, but it says reversible interaction between a cart and a spring anchored to a post. Okay, so um, we're going to look at a little example here of reversible. Well, first of all, how do we know that it's non-dissipative? How do we know it's non-dissipative? Because it's reversible. Okay, what does that mean? So here we have a cart moving towards a spring. Okay, and you should know by now that the spring, I hope you know, um, stores energy. So there's potential energy in the spring. Well, not, not now, but a, a spring can store potential energy. Okay, so the cart is moving towards the spring. There's high kinetic energy, okay, and there's zero potential energy because the spring is at its relaxed position. Right? It hasn't been uh, compressed or it hasn't been stretched. It's at its relaxed position. There's no potential energy stored in the spring. So that's why it's zero. Then they, make, they, they interact. Okay? The kinetic energy goes down, of course, because it's slowing down. But the potential energy is increasing. Okay? Then at the point where V equals zero, we have zero kinetic energy. And now we have maximum potential energy. 
all right then it begins to so it's now been fully compressed to its maximum compression limit then it starts to be relaxed again towards its uh, equilibrium or its relaxed position the potential energy is going down as you can see and the kinetic energy is increasing and then when it's fully released and it's not touching anymore the the kinetic energy again is at its maximum and the spring has zero potential energy N so that's that's one way you can just analyze that but the point of a a non-dissipative interaction which this is because there is um, there's kinetic energy and potential energy K and U okay non-dissipative it means that it's reversible meaning if you look at, at it this way you go from here this say this turns around and starts to move again okay you will if you reverse this you won't be able to tell w which way it's which way is uh, forward and back because they're identical okay so um, it says here we know that this interaction is reversible because it could run in reverse the reverse process is possible okay I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now this is what I was trying to say earlier: is that your delta k plus your delta u is zero in a reversible, non-dissipative interaction, and in this specific case, we're looking at the potential energy of the spring. So if you rearrange this, you can get if we're looking just at the spring, right? Then we get this. So the change in the kinetic energy is the negative of the change in the potential energy of the spring. Okay. So there's another important thing here to see. The potential energy in the spring must also have the same value at any given position on the way in and on the way out. This is to do with the reversibility. Okay. What do we mean by that? So the potential energy in the spring okay, must have the same value at any given position on the way in and on the way out. Meaning that if you, so now you have a spring that's fully relaxed, there's no potential energy, then, you com then, it's move, then it's, you're compressing it so that it's compressed like that. Okay? And then you compress it a little bit more so that it's maximum compression and then you let it go so that it has exactly the same compression as that right these two this one you've gone you've been compressing it in and this one you've been letting it go so that it, it, it moves back to its equilibrium position both of these because they have the same position x x1 even though you've this one uh, was moving towards full compression and this one was moving towards full relaxation, the potential energy stored in the spring is identical in both of these cases. So it is. So what we learn is that potential energy is simply a function of the position. Okay, it's not a function of the path of motion. It's simply a function of the position. Okay, so now let's read this final one. A direct consequence of this dependence of potential energy on position. I, I, want, I just want to say it again. So it's similar. I'm just going to, if you take a box, okay, now we're going to look at gravitational potential energy, and you throw it up, okay, and it's at a certain height, x1, and it goes all the way to the top, and then we know that it comes down again. If we measure the potential energy there on the way up and we measure the potential energy on the way down, we will see that the potential energy is identical. So it's a reversible process and so the potential energy is only dependent on its position. It is a function only of its position. Okay, now, because of the dependence of potential energy on the position, um, the kinetic energy of an object that moves from position x1 to x2 de also depends only on those positions. Okay? So, 
The kinetic energy of this box at this position is the same kinetic energy of the box at that position. Right? The kinetic energy of, um, if these two are the same positions, I think it is, then the kinetic energy of this cart is the same. Why? Because if the potential energy is a function of position, then the kinetic energy in this non-dissipative interaction is also a function of the position. Okay? All right, I hope that's making sense. We're going to do this example in the next one, example 7.4.